Okay, heat pump water heater condensation line. These will sometimes get clogged up and they'll stop up. Now, uh, ideally at the top of this line, you would want a T fitting. This is just a 90. You can see it come, comes out at 890 straight down. If it, if it was a T, I'd have access up here where I could look down inside of there. So there's a black tray inside of here uh, where condensation will form and drip down into the black tray and it simply just runs out here all by gravity okay so this line uh, goes downhill you would never want it you know completely at a, a horizontal line or certainly not going uphill it's not going to drain like that um, this one like i said doesn't have the t but i do have a breakable union so we've got uh, some schedule 80 pvc right here and then uh, breakable union, which is a flex line right here. So if I needed to, if I suspected this was clogged up, I want to know where it's clogged up because if it's clogged up somewhere in the line, um, we're going to need to get it cleared and it's, it's not a warranty issue. Now, traditionally drain clogs are uh, not a warranty concern no matter what, but at any rate, we need to try and figure out where it is so that we can clear it. Shop vac. Right, here's the end of a shop vac. It's a great way to clear a line. Um, if it is just so packed that it will not clear with a shop vac, uh, you may have to get a technician out there with some compressed air. So I'm gonna show you the easy way to do it. Uh, if you have a breakable union or a T, obviously if there's a T up here, I could see whether or not it was clogged up here. In my case, if I had a clog, I might check right here. And I can do that by uh, loosening this. Okay, and then that would tell me right there. I could run the water heater, water would drip here. Uh, there's no standing water in this pipe right here. And if I wanted to be really gross, I could put my mouth on it and blow on it, but I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so we're gonna do this. I'm gonna just reattach it right here. Now, let me add this real quick though. If I suspected that the stoppage were somewhere up here, all I would need to do is disconnect that and I take my shop vac, turn it on and just seal around there right there and just get that full suction of that shop vac down in there. Okay, and I can suck out whatever's in that pan. Uh, it gets a little bit gross inside of there and slimy sometimes. Uh, obviously these are in basements and garages. It can be real dusty, it can get kind of gross. Um, if you do uh, use a shop vac right here and you suspect it's, it's uh, stopped up in that pan, you can see down in there. Okay, take a, Pull your filter out. Pull this up here. You pull your filter out. And then you get a light and you can shine down in there and you'll be able to see whether or not this water is pulled up inside of there. If there's water pulled up inside of there, it's gonna to touch that sensor, it's gonna throw the code. Uh, if you're getting a code and there is no water inside of there, the sensor may be the problem. Okay, but let's assume that we do have a stoppage here and I've taken this apart. I've established that it's not inside of the pan and it's not in this pipe right here. It's, it's probably further down the line. Uh, it's important to know where this goes. Let me show you where this one goes. Okay, so the condensate line from that water heater comes right to the outside wall. Uh, the shorter, the better on your condensate lines. The less distance the water has to travel, the better. So that one goes down the water heater and then right out the sidewall. If I suspect that it stopped up, I can try and clear it with my shop vac and just taking it and using it right there to get the full suction inside of that pipe and suck out what kind of weird goop is inside of there. Uh, if you're dealing with something that's in a basement or an attic and you've got a long vertical run of uh, condensation, you might experience stoppages. Uh, shop vac, it's a great way to do it. Now it's important to note when you're on the outside, this is applies to any any condensate line really uh, put your shop back in there and have this on suction and we'll try and do it that way uh, a lot of shop vacs have a feature where you can reverse it and you can actually put pressure back into the pipe uh, don't do that because if there is a stoppage a lot of gross stuff inside of there it'll blast and just splatter on the inside of the water heater and that's that's not good we don't want that all right so just use your suction right there and just go inside of there now um, let's go back to the water heater real quick All right, so back in here at the heater. Now, like I said, um, if you have a T up here, it makes it extremely easy to uh, identify problems. You can simply look down inside of there and see if water's pooling up inside of this line. 
Uh, it also, if you've got a long run, it uh, allows access to treat the line. I'm pouring a cup of bleach down in there uh, once a month or once a quarter. Again, the frequency of which you would treat this line depends on how bad it is. Um, of course, long term, if you do have a long run, you can have a technician come out and maybe look at some options for a shorter run or something a little bit uh, less obstructive to the condensation so that it can just exit the building and, and drip outside as quick as possible. Um, if you have this hooked up to a condensate pump, it's a good idea to check the pump. Those do require maintenance. So every quarter or every month, again, depending on the frequency of which it requires it, and after you use it for a certain amount of time, you'll know it's condensate going to a pump and the pump is having problems every few months or every month or every 90 days or whatever the case may be. Um, you'll need to get in there, shut it down, take it apart, clean it, put it back together, put it back in service and then you can go. But again, shop vac is your best friend for something like this. Just put that in there, suck out whatever's inside of there and then see if you can get it to, to drain. Um, I would also recommend having a tea right here so that you could uh, treat that with some bleach, pour that down inside of there. Uh, it'll also let you know, you know, if you're pouring bleach down in this tea and you can watch it on the outside wall, it'll, it'll let you know if it's draining completely. So that's all you need to do on your, uh, uh, condensate line. Uh, important to know, real quick, let me add this, that black tray inside of this water heater, um, it's three quarter inch iron pipe threads. So you're gonna thread a pipe inside of there um, and then you'll attach onto a T or 90, however you do it out here. Um, be careful with this black tray. If you wanna thread something inside of there that's brass, metal, any type of metal, it's not gonna be as forgiving as the plastic pipe and it will crack. If this black plastic tray, if this black, plastic tray inside of your cracks uh, there's not a replacement part for it and there's not a way to service it you're going to have to replace the whole water heater so um, be cautious when you're threading something in there especially iron pipe as you know the threads flare out um, the further you go back so just be careful when you're threading into there and uh, run your pipe in a downhill uh, orientation and you should be good